Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at painting the rocks and boulders in the hand painted bridge over the river scene. I'll try and make this a fairly quick tutorial, I have other tutorials about painting stones and it's a very similar workflow. So here I am, I've painted a few rocks already and you can see the results. What I'm quickly going to do is take one of the rocks, copy it and re-unwrap it and put it into my unwrap over here in some of the spaces. That way I'll have a couple of rocks that have a bit of variation. So make sure I'm in object mode, select one of my rocks, shift D to duplicate, into edit mode. Let's change this to the UV image editor and you can see how it's unwrapped there. Now I can select on the islands and select one of my islands and grab it and move it. I may have to scale it down really slightly to fit it in, but that should be fine. Control spacebar will maximize that particular view. And there we go, making full use of the space. Control space bar to come back out. And now I can paint this rock in the same way I painted the last ones. I'm not sure I want it sticking out there though. I'll go back into object mode and perhaps move it over here a bit. And that's fine. So across into texture paint mode again with the fill brush and let's find a similar color to this rock. So I'll sample this and there's our sample down there. And make sure I'm on mix for my fill brush and I can turn it all the way up and let's fill that in. Now I'm going to make it slightly more towards the brown of these. So I'll select one of those browns somewhere around there, bring the mix brush down and fill it a bit. And there we go, that's a good starting point. Across to my draw brush now, make sure I'm on the normal mix mode, strength down a bit, about 0.2, and then fill in with a few variations of that color. I'll isolate for this so it's easier. Now don't worry too much about this where you get these sharp lines here. They can actually be slightly helpful. So when I paint on one side, you can see a sharp line across. Don't make it too different from your main color. So I've got a strength of 0.2 and I'm just going around filling in some different colors to add some variation to my rock. And you can go quite wild with this. I'm just picking colors from my color palette that are there already. And with a low strength, it just adds that tiny bit of variation. Back out of isolation mode, you can see, make sure that that's not too far from your other rocks or the main colors in your scene. So I do want to add a bit of shading to this. So I'll go to the multiply and isolate again and just paint on the bottom side. I've still got the green selected. That might not be the best, but in a strange way, that's probably quite good in this scenario because it's against the grass. However, it's best as we're doing a modular approach to stick with the main color, which is this one, just slightly darker, of course, for the multiply. Don't worry again too much that it's overlapping in places and causing these odd effects. That doesn't matter too much at this stage and we've always got the smudge brush to help us at the earliest stages. So nice and bright with the screen brush, same color, but just a bit brighter. Maybe I'll come across and give it a bit more saturation for the brightness. Otherwise it can look quite flat sometimes, so a bit more saturation sometimes. So any bits that are sort of sticking out, just have a look from an angle and check if they're sticking out and we'll highlight those. Okay, back out of isolation mode and let's see how we're looking. Full stop to zoom in on that object. And in a way, that's an okay rock. If you don't want any details and you just want a sort of cartoony look, then that's all right. I want to take it a bit further, of course. I'm gonna get my smudge brush and just smudge out slightly some of these edges. I don't want too much in there. I'll go back into isolation mode so I can see the bottom because I know there's a few areas around there. I want to keep a bit of them in so I can see where the edges of my rock are. And if it isn't against an edge, then I'll sort of smudge it out a fair bit. But there could be quite handy to see that edge because I can highlight that as an edge. And if you're going for a very simplistic rock approach, then just smudge these out and you're pretty much done. Back out of isolation mode and let's have a look how we're doing. So that's an okay looking rock-ish. <laughs> just smudge that top there. Now let's try some highlights and crevices and things like that. So I'll get my screen brush again and just have a look where the edges are and follow some lines. So I'm naturally looking where the edges are but I'm also looking at where I've naturally kind of made some edges as well. So this is if you want the sort of sharp pointy style of rock. If you want a very pointy style rock, then you make these highlights very harsh. But they're fairly soft at the moment. It's still a strength of 0.2, so it's not sticking out too far. And let's just look back a bit 
and see how that's doing. It's kind of okay. It's not, it's not amazing at the moment, but it's okay. We could have even gone a, a slightly lower strength than this, in fact. So I'm just filling in some details. I might smudge some of these out later, but I'm just experimenting, having a bit of fun, thinking about how a rock might be broken up like this. A sharp point at the end there, I'm going to highlight that so I can see it. I'm pressing very lightly on my brush and I've got my pen pressure on. And I'm making my lines fairly wobbly, they're not very straight. Taking my time a fair bit. I do speed some aspects of this tutorial up, just because it gets really dull if it's really long. And very occasionally I cut bits out that I think, oh that was just hopeless, because I don't want to waste your time when I'm teaching. I do try and leave my mistakes in though because I think that's really helpful to people. Okay, so I've got a very simplistic sort of rock there and again that's looking okay and you could pause at that point and think that's fine, I'm happy with my rock. Don't worry too much about the fact that it looks like it's sitting badly on top of your grass because later on we can bake all our textures onto one map and they can be all separate. And then we can go in and start painting our edges and put some grass in here and it will be separate and it won't be modular anymore. So we'll break the module approach and make it all separate. And then we can sort of really go free with our painting at that point. It's a very slightly complicated process so you might want to just stick to the modules though. So back to my multiply brush and let's fill in a few areas that we might be a bit dark. So at the bottom obviously the sun's coming from the top so there's a highlight there so I've got to paint in dark underneath it. Same here. I'm using a still a quite light colour and a low strength, so it's very, very light. But hopefully you can see the idea. Just going to zoom in on my object again with full stop. Now this area here doesn't really make a lot of sense unless it sort of sticks in like that. So you've just got to think about the shape in 3D, even though the shape isn't necessarily there because you're painting it on. So just be aware of it. Okay, that's fine. So we've got a few sort of areas now which look like they're underneath and away from the light. So we need a few highlights. So back to the screen brush. And let's highlight that top area there. Might be a bit too hard. I'm a bit light on my screen. Nope, not liking that. Back up a little bit. So I'm treating these as if they're fairly flat surfaces. So they should be sort of catching the light a bit. That's a bit better. Okay, so now we want some of these sort of holy bits and maybe a few sort of lines. So we're going with the multiply brush to start with. I always find that's a good starting point. It's like you're painting with pencil then. Darker colour. And let's just make a fairly round circle. Back to the screen brush lighter colour, brush down and paint a highlight on it. So the edge is sort of catching the light, maybe catching the light around here as it, the sun comes down. Might be a bit too bright, yes I've gone too far. Let's undo that a little bit. About there I think. Yeah, it's very rounded at the moment so it looks a little bit odd. Maybe I'll just come in here as if there's a little nick in here or something. And back to the multiply brush because I think it needs to be a bit darker just underneath here where it's where the light's coming down and not getting into this fake crevice that I've made. Okay, so that's a bit light at the moment, a bit too much, a bit too high contrast I would say, so a bit too dark and a bit too light in other places. So let's have a look around. I just need to undo a little bit of that and with my multiply brush, let's bring the strength down, same thing, just under there. That's a little bit better. I might have to go back to my screen brush to kind of undo some of this. So back to the screen brush, very light. There. Still seems a little bit light. I'm gonna fade this in more. About there, okay. So with a few more of those, hopefully uh, they'll look okay. If it's really not working, then the smudge brush, and you can sort of smudge it out a bit, smudge it into each other, and blur it up a little bit. It should work okay just softening it out a bit. So it feels a bit too dark. Maybe with a few more around the place, it won't look as bad. Okay, so let's find another spot and try again. I'll try harder this time to get it looking better. So maybe somewhere around here. 
So there's going to be a little crevice in here and I'm going to make it a bit wobbly this time. So it's not just circular shaped, it's bean shaped this time. And then to the screen brush. And again, I'm not changing the color much or the strength. The multiply brush will just do its work and the screen brush as well, of course. So just a little highlight on the top there, but mainly a bit more down here where the light's coming across here and downwards. So just zoom out again. That looks okay-ish. <laughs> Maybe catching the light from some of these areas as well. And then back to the multiply brush. Fill in that crevice a bit more. So a few dents there. They're just about working. I'm going to smudge them up a little bit. I don't want to add too much detail because it can look a bit odd if you suddenly got a really detailed bit when these bits aren't, let's say. So I'm looking for the same amount of detail as this, roughly. And it's looking okay. So let's go to the multiply brush and try some cracks and crevices. Let's try a crack across here. So fairly light brush just to see whether it works. Let's go a bit smaller and go in the middle of it now. So I'm still on the multiply brush, so it's kind of adding a bit of darkness to it. And let's go across that into here. See how that's looking. Mm, okay. <laughs> I can tell I'm not immensely happy with this, but it's okay. So just outlining the crack with some screen brush. And you can kind of experiment with that. So there we go, a very light crack. It's best to not go overboard, just subtle changes. Maybe a bit more angular. And there we go, a simple crack. So let's see how we're looking. It looks like there's an eye and a smiley face. So you've got to watch out for those sort of things. It looks like a creature now. Smiley face and two eyes. So do watch out for that. Recognizable shapes in objects. Okay, so that's how you can add cracks and small sort of nicks and such things. I feel like they need to be blurred out a bit and a tiny bit bigger. There we go. I'm just changing the shape of that. I'm not sure I like the shape so much. Maybe this one. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure the shadow isn't too much because I will paint in the shadow later on so it'll look and match up with each other. Now you might want to go a bit further and add some more detail to your rocks. You can try doing that with just a color that's lighter, so sample the color. So I've got my sample there, but bring the color down and maybe a bit more saturation. And then you can go across your object, adding in a few cracks, maybe a slightly bigger brush than that. Just very simply going across, adding a bit of detail in places. So this is sort of fairly uh, cracky type of rock that's coming out now. Ish anyway, it's not majorly. Hopefully I'm making sense with this stuff. So just making some wobbly lines, going fairly fast here, so I'm not speeding up too much I don't think I always do that afterwards so I don't know exactly but I sort of decide as I'm going along when I'm editing and maybe fill in a few of these tiny areas so they look like they're going in and out not just a, a flat line which doesn't really make sense so adding a bit of shading with the multiply brush still okay so let's zoom out and see how that's looking mm, fairly rockish not too bad and then maybe a bit of screen just to liven up a bit of these corners. And you might just get odd areas that just have a bit of a highlight anyway. So it doesn't have to follow these lines, but usually you get a dark line with a light line. That's just kind of how things work. You get a shadow and then a highlight where it sort of sticks out and pushes in. So I'm highlighting these crevices that I've made as well. And we've got a very simple rock there. I'm not sure about my crack, really. I think there needs to be either thinner or there possibly needs to be more of them in order for it to make sense. It looks like it's just got a weird smile at the moment. So if you're not happy with things, then you can smudge them out. And now it's not so obvious. I'm going to, with my screen brush, just highlight a few areas around here. And back to the multiply brush, I think. Just make that crevice go in, a few more crevices around, and maybe this splits off down here. 
probably gone a bit too detailed now because when I start zooming out to around here, which I imagine is going to be more the sort of location of our camera in game, you can see what's going on a bit more and you can't really see much of that crack. I feel like there needs to be a few more dents around, so I'm going to just paint some of those in. Same scenario, multiply brush, bit of a smaller one this time, screen brush, always thinking about the angle of the sun, it's a little bit dark, so I'll turn it up, there's one there, and occasionally you might just want to put some small ones in with the multiply brush, maybe turn it up just a touch. You can always go around afterwards with the screen brush and then sort of fill them in as you see fit. So let's go back to the screen brush and just tidy any areas up that I think need a bit of highlighting. Okay, so we've got a simple rock again. Now at this point you might want to think about the colours and how they match together. Does it match the other rock? And you can easily change colours with the fill brush and come across to the colour blend mode, so the colour here, let's say I wanted a very ready colour, let's just uh, put it up to about 50%, and I've got a really ready sort of rock, if I'm on Mars, I'll undo that, or maybe a bluey colour, and I've got a blue, very, and I've got a very bluey rock. I'm happy roughly with where it is, but I think it needs to be a bit darker, so I'm going to go with the multiply on a sort of ready colour to bring it in line with these ones, but bring the strength right down, and I can always tap a couple of times if I want to, in order to sort of get it to the rock I want. Do I want it that dark? I kind of like it actually. I'm going to go back one and bring the strength down a touch so it's about halfway. I do like that fill brush for that. So I feel like it needs a bit more contrast now so I'm going to fill in the bottom more. Now I do like to have an underside and a top side to my rocks even though I'm duplicating them across my model so let's do that now. Let's uh, grab one We're in object mode, shift D and shift Z so it stays on the same level plane, zoom in on it with a full stop, and we'll rotate it around the z-axis. Let's scale it down a bit as well. Grab it, not on the z, with shift z. The pivot point's a bit weird, that's not so great. So a little bit of rotation, but not too much, so we've got a couple of rocks. Now let's look at our original, and go back to texture paint. Now notice I didn't do too much rotation because I do want to paint the underside with some multiply and the top side with some screen. So let's do that now into isolation mode to make it easier. I haven't got much detail on my bottom which is a bit naughty of me. But I'm just going to use this sort of top area anyway so that should be fine. Now with my brush selected, use my multiply. Low strength still. I'm just sort of painting in. There's still a very harsh line there which is probably a bit bad form. I might change that later. You can sometimes go for a nice big brush and just sort of paint up lightly, but you have to watch out for these harsh lines that you sometimes get if it overlaps and goes around a corner. That's fine. I'm going to go to the screen brush and just add a little bit of a highlight, nice and bright for this. Might have a bit more saturation as well. Okay, so there's a simple rock. Let's see how it's fitting in our scene. And that's not too bad, it's probably a bit too harsh at the moment, but I will paint it in with some grass in here a bit later on towards the end. And I'll show you how to do that in the next few episodes. Just going to move these around so they're sitting comfortably. I have to be careful not to move these too much because I have painted my river bed around that rock. So this one's the one I've got to change. I'm going to go to top view just so I can do that easily. There we go, nudged up against each other and that kind of works. I might have a few of these in the base as well, so let's duplicate that one. Shift D, and what would be good if I had snapping on? So let's move it there. Con Shift Tab is the shortcut to snapping, and I've got it on face mode up here. And now if I grab that, it will snap roughly to the surface. Not great really, is it? Snapping back off, and then grab it in the Y. Now let's see where my shading is, and I might want to just adapt the rotation according to my shading. So the top side is here. Just uh, rotate it around the wire a little bit. I might put a few more around the bottom here as well. Nice big ones. That will break the base up slightly. Okay, it's sort of very rocky landscape at the moment. Probably need a few smaller ones as well. 
but it's starting to work. Okay, perhaps a few too many rocks, but it's kind of fun. So thanks for watching, and I hope you're enjoying the series. Do put in the comments anything that you'd like to see. And I've already done an episode on the wood, so I won't be doing that. So the next one will be about the plants, and the last one will be about the particle system. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.